This is a midweek surprise mailbag. As usual, it contains many things. And because it's midweek, I omit the usual warning. Great YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Two times the same thing, so we open one. This is a special V-Room chip. It's not a V-Rover chip, it's smaller, but it has a UFL antenna connector. Usually the V-Room chips do not have an antenna connector, they have just the normal PCB antenna. And I wanted to have a little bit more reach on the tank. And an interesting detail here, it has also two LEDs. I think they are NeoPixels, if I am right. So, quite a special board from ecspc.com. This board came with these two antennas. One is a pigtail and the other one is this antenna. It should resonate on 2.4 gigahertz and uh, we will test it now. This antenna here, you don't, do not see anything. It has a SWR of more than 3.5, so we have to reduce the sensitivity. And you see at 2.4 gigahertz it nearly has the maximum instead of the minimum. The minimum would be here but still above 3.0 so this antenna here is completely useless on 2.4 gigahertz. By the way this is how a better 2.4 gigahertz antenna looks like. It has a dip. It's also not at 2.4, it's probably at 2.3, but it goes nearly down to 1.1 and here at 2.4 gigahertz it has still a, a SWR of about 2.2 or so. So it's usable, it's not good, it's usable. Next one. This is an OBD2 dongle and it has Bluetooth and uh, it can be plugged in all newer cars. Newer means less than about 20 years and it reads the engine values and stuff like that. Maybe I will experiment once with this uh, dongle to read the different values of my car. And also, it is interesting as a Bluetooth device, this is also why I bought a Bluetooth one. Maybe I want to experiment also a little bit with the, um, the ESP32 to give it an next try if the BLE support is already better. Next one. This one has a SAMD21 module times one in it. It is a nice small chip from Wemos, but uh, I'm not sure if this is from Wemos. It is named Sam D21 Mini, and this chip here seems to be the rising star. Next one. This one does not come from China, obviously. This comes from Switzerland, but originally. The product came from the United States of America. The Adafruit dealer here in Switzerland is called PlaceZone. And we have here a Feather M0 Express. A nice PCB. with a small chip and a little bit of breadboard area here. Can, you can connect it to a battery and it has a SAMD21 chip on it. This SAMD21 chip is now more and more important because it is used in a few designs and Adafruit especially uses it 
for MicroPython or their derivative circuit Python. Actually, I wanted uh, more SAMD51, which is the bigger sister, but unfortunately it was not available here in Switzerland. So I start with this SAMD21. So I have a choice of two. This one does not have a battery management. This one has a battery management. And there are a few other differences. For example, this one has also a NeoPixel. So this seems to be a very nice board, but I want to see if this works too. Next one, <laughs> a huge one. This is something completely new to me. These are wires, which I should be able to illuminate. A little bit disappointing. I think I have to switch off the light. Now you see it. In daylight you don't see anything. Now it looks a little bit like the old neon lights. I saw a project where somebody did a display, number display, using, these, using this technology and I never heard about it, so I thought I'd buy a few to experiment. And here we get the usual visitor. She doesn't like if I'm still working. She wants that I caress her. This is much better. So now I have to work again and you have to go to bed. Bye. <laughs> I added now 1.5 volt batteries instead of the rechargeable batteries which have only 1.2 volt but the effect is not much different. You see it blinks and with light you hardly see it. You get them in different colors, in orange, in purple, in red, in yellow, in green I think. So if you look at them in the dark they really look nice. I have to admit during Daylight, it's not usable. I purchased a few of these in one meter length and different colors. So all in all, for the night, it's really a nice thing. Don't try to use them during daylight. EL wire is built from a copper wire, which is encapsulated by a phosphor coating and a copper wire winding. And if we apply alternating current to the two copper wires, then this phosphor starts to glow. It seems that these EL wires are very efficient. AA batteries can illuminate a few hundred feet of EL wire for several hours. So my batteries for sure will last forever with this meter long wire. But we obviously need high voltage and high frequency power supply, so there is some electronics in these battery boxes. Next one, small package. These are ULN 2003A and they are Darlington arrays. 
you can get them in different versions. The 2003 works also with 3.3 volt input. And the output voltage is up to 50 volt and 500 milliampere. If we look at the schematic, we have two, four, six, seven drivers with an input and an output. The input, as I said, is 3.3 to 5 volt, and the output is so-called open collector. What does this mean? This is the schematic. You see each of these drivers consists of two transistors in a special configuration. It is called Darlington, and this configuration has a very high gain. And you see here, there is no plus connection. You would connect the motor, for example, here in between, and here you would create the plus. As soon as this transistor starts to conduct, the motor uh, gets current and starts to work. And this diode here is in the opposite direction, and this is for surge protection, because if you switch on and off coils, it produces a voltage spike, which could destroy the whole circuit here. So this is already built in this chip. You can use these for all kinds of uh, things, for LEDs and stuff like that. Always if you have not enough current or not enough voltage with a microcontroller like an ESP32 or an Arduino. Very universal chips and dirt cheap of course. Next one. These are MOC3063. They are special optocouplers. These are zero cross opto isolators for triax. And if you remember, I wanted to build a coil gun and I already have some triax and these are the driver chips which you can connect to a microcontroller. My uh, coil gun should work on 450 volt. So even if something happens, there is a complete separation between the coil and my microcontroller. This one is a huge one and it's delivered from DHL. Two small antennas and if you remember I tested once the antennas of Rack and uh, they were not very good and people at Rack also look at my videos and they did not like my findings and they tested themselves and found the same result and uh, they changed now their supplier so sometimes it helps if YouTubers testings online. Oh, these should be okay. They sent me two new ones uh, to test. Let's have a look at it. But there is still something here. I think I did not order. N-type connectors. Also 868 MHz. Nice antennas for a gateway. Quality seems to be Okay, from a mechanical point of view. And of course, we have to test these two. So this time I need a different adapter to SMA here that we have the shortest distance. I do not want to use these cables for the test. I just want to use an adapter to be sure that we do not have any error introduced by these cables. Because Rack uses the RP standard it does not fit here because we have two female parts. So we have to use an adapter to match these two. And you see here, my adapters with RP standard all are marked red that I immediately see that this side is, re is red, it's RP standard, and this one is not red, this is the normal standard. So the RP one comes here and the normal comes here. The antenna is at 
1.6 VWSR, which is okay, which is actually everything below 2 is good for our purposes. And the resonance is, or the minimum is at 868 as expected or as wished. And if I just touch the, the ground a little bit, it comes down to 1 to 1.4. So you see the influence of just a hand, but still the minimum is okay. So these antennas are now okay. This one is even better. It is nearly 1 to 1. So it's 1 to 1.2 and the minimum is right on the spot. The antennas are sold by Rack Wireless Module Store and you get them for 868, 915, 470, which is strange. I don't know of an ISM band there, but 433. And they cost in total about $35, which is a little bit cheaper than the antenna from Slovakia. This antenna is much shorter than the one from Slovakia and it has no radials. So I assume that the gain is a little bit different, but I cannot measure. Next one comes from a viewer, which is also a very small startup here in Switzerland. It is called OxoCard. So let's have a look inside what they sent me. First, everything is in German, so it's probably not as interesting for the English speaking community. I do not know if they also provide English uh, stuff, but it is a STEM system and it says to learn to program like a, like a game. A nice board with a battery and lots of NeoPixels and an ESP32, which of course I like. A serial connection so it can be programmed here, I assume. A few buttons. Let's open this one here. I hope I do not destroy anything. No, I don't think so. Oh, here is the second one. Ah, this is the kit itself. I see. So it's, it's, pro, it's, this is an original kit and this is an additional one, maybe to play around for me. So let's uh, behave like a child. They have a nice description here with all the different things and they do not use the Arduino IDE. They use a programming language called Blocky, which seems to be online. I have to check it afterwards. Here we have a small program. It is a piano. This means piano and it has one, two, three, four, five, six different tones and depends on which button is pressed. So left top, left button outside, left button inside and so on. Now we have to press the buttons on the OxoCart. Now it waits for a upload and now it uploads. And it's done. Now let's check. Seems to work. Now this is a nice small device made in Switzerland this time. And I think the kids will love it because it has light and sound. And you see what you can do with just a few NeoPixels. This is really a great invention. This was all for today. Maybe you found one or the other interesting product or at least got some ideas or useful information. I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon and viewers using my links for their purchases for supporting the channel. Without you, it would be difficult for me to do what I do now. Bye.